Cruise news time. Well, many of us have pondered which of the big three cruise lines would be going test-free first. Well, we, we have an answer. Also, uh, a fishing boat has struck a cruise ship. And uh, unfortunately, I've got to issue an apology. Cruise news. Let's talk about it. Hey, 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 what's up, everybody? Welcome to La Little Loca. I'm your host, Tony, here with the latest cruise news updates. Welcome to Sunday. Welcome to July the 31st, 2022. The last day in July. And let me hit you in the face with some cruise news. Just a few days ago, Royal Caribbean announced that it would be dropping its pre-cruise testing for some of its cruises on August the 8th, 2022. They were the first one out of the gate with an announcement when it comes to Royal, Carnival, and Norwegian. Well, just uh, give it a couple days and somebody's going to go ahead and one-up you. Carnival came out just a couple days later and said, yeah, that's a cool announcement, Royal. We're going to do something very similar, but we're going to do it sooner. Carnival announcing that they will be dropping pre-cruise testing for some of their cruises uh, on August the 4th, the full four days before Royal Caribbean. Now, I'm not saying it's a little bit of a cat and mouse game, but you know what it feels like? A little bit of a cat and mouse game. A little bit of, yeah, you were able to announce first, but we were able to announce better. Let me give you the exact deets on what Carnival announced, and then I'll give you some commentary. Let me get my notes. All right, this is the official policy as posted on the Carnival website, updated 7-29-2022. Effective with sailings departing August the 4th, 2022, there will be no pre-cruise testing for fully vaccinated guests booked on cruises with itineraries of five days or less. Pre-cruise testing for itineraries six days or longer can be conducted up to three days before departure. I'll leave the policy on the screen for a minute. You can pause and read that if you want, but it goes on to talk about what it means to be fully vaccinated and what it means to be up to date. Uh, if you're fully vaccinated, that means that you've had uh, the, the two shots or the one shot, the two shots of the Moderna or the Pfizer, the one shot of Johnson & Johnson. They may be allowing other you know varieties of the vaccine. Make sure you check the Carnival website. Now, when they say up to date, that means that you've had the two shots and a booster if you're eligible, or the one shot and a booster if you are eligible. So whenever you see up to date, uh, you should equate that with booster. Up to date equals booster. Fully vaccinated means no booster. And when it comes to the carnival policy, the, the real big change is previously only people who were up to date could get their test three days before the cruise. They gave them three days on the vaccinated side. Uh, fully vaccinated had to get their test two days before the cruise. Uh, now with this policy, the way it reads on the website, if you're up to date or if you're fully vaccinated, you can use three days to take your test. Uh, now unvaccinated folks, there were some changes for them. Uh, you used to be able to be tested at the cruise port if you were unvaccinated. Well, that's not true. Uh, unvaccinated folks, they need a test for every cruise regardless of the length, and they have to get that test themselves. That test will not be offered at the cruise port, and those can be taken three days before the cruise. The change for unvaccinated folks is they have one less testing option where they could have been tested at the cruise port. Now that isn't possible. Make sure you go over to the Carnival website to get all of the updated details. It goes in deeper about exemptions for unvaccinated people. But to distill it down into just a couple points, if you're unvaccinated, you need a test for any cruise that you're taking on Carnival. If you are vaccinated and your cruise is five days or shorter, you don't need a test. If you're vaccinated and your cruise is six days or longer, you do need a test. And then if you're going to any location where the location requires you to have a test, uh, then you do need a test. And so the, the big call out on that is if you're going to Canada, if you're going to Bermuda, both of those locations require a test prior to sailing. Uh, so regardless of the length of cruise, you will still need a test for that. That is very similar to the announcement that Royal Caribbean put out. Uh, the interesting thing is Carnival has said that this is going to be a phased approach to removing pre-cruise testing. And so this is phase one. I've already seen a lot of comments, people, you know, pitchforks and torches, all that kind of stuff. Uh, I just remind everybody that even though restrictive change happens quickly, it does seem that removing those restrictions happens slowly. And so uh, I guess 
my caution is instead of getting all up in arms because the initial change is not the change that you like, uh, maybe the silver lining is that change is happening to make things less restrictive. And so uh, hold tight. I know we're not really good at holding tight, but uh, I, I see this as a positive move toward uh, lessening the restrictions for cruising, but you got to start somewhere. Just the same way the cruise restart started with a few drips out of the faucet and then it became a full flow. Uh, that's the way this change is going to go also. Or you may not care. You may just want to be mad about it. But yeah, uh, I don't have any opinion as to why the five days versus the six days. I don't have all that data. I don't have a panel of health experts. I don't know how any of that's being decided, but it, it is what the is is. And so obviously we can bemoan it, but uh, if we want to cruise, we have to slot ourselves into what the is is. So uh, there's that. Cruise news story number two. Imagine that you're sleeping sweetly in your bed on a cruise ship and then 2 a.m. in the morning, whammo blammo, you get a little bit of bangy bangy on the side of the cruise ship because a fishing vessel has done run into your cruise ship. Well, that's the scenario up there on the northeast coast near Nantucket. There once was a man from Nantucket. I don't think that's this kind of show. Uh, up in Nantucket, uh, the Norwegian Pearl was cruising right along when a fishing boat called the Gabby G uh, ran into it. Uh, we know that the Gabby G ran into it. That was confirmed by the Coast Guard that happened at some point, 2 a.m. this morning. Uh, damage, not sure the extent of the damage to the cruise ship, but no injury, uh, extensive damage to the Gabby G. And uh, one person on the Gabby G has lacerations. So a reported uh, injury on the Gabby G. Hopefully everybody is okay. Hopefully that cruise ship is not damaged in a way where she won't be able to sail. Uh, but she's doing cruises on the northeast coast, uh, out of Boston, going over to Bermuda. A freak circumstance. They said the weather was okay, but maybe a little bit of rain. Uh, but yeah, you never know. You never know what's going to happen. Have you ever been run into by another vessel while you're on a cruise ship? That's got to be an odd occurrence. Uh, but yeah, if, if, if so, leave a comment below. And, and important to note, the Norwegian Pearl was cleared to continue its cruise onto Bermuda. I've seen some reports of people on that cruise ship like, we're not getting enough information as to what's happening. I, I don't know what, what they're going to be told more than, you know, something hit them. But uh, yeah. And look, in the intro, I promised you guys an apology and an apology you shall get. Uh, but before I get there, let me quickly invite you to subscribe. If you like staying up to date with everything that's going on in cruising, please consider subscribing with the notification bell on. That way you don't miss out on any of these episodes. We're closing in on 200,000 subscribers. We're on our way to 18 million subscribers. And uh, we would love for each and every one of you to be a part of the local fam. So uh, it doesn't cost anything. All, all that happens is that YouTube notifies you when the new show is out. You can be in the, the, the notification squad, some of the first people to watch the show. And uh, I will be eternally grateful for your uh, subscription. Uh, thank you in advance. Advance. All right. Uh, apologies. So it, it's interesting on the YouTube, the thing that triggers people. And uh, on Friday, something really got triggering with people, and I feel like I need to apologize if I've caused any confusion. Uh, however, I haven't seen an uproar like this since the whole challenge of uh, pronouncing Cartagena and Puerto Vallarta. Uh, that, that, that raised quite a stir. Uh, I also had to uh, make amends uh, at one point for uh, my Canadian viewers and for viewers that were over 120 years old. I had to make amends. Uh, the thing is, I said a word on the show Friday, and I don't even I don't even remember what the word was. But I got a ton I got a ton of uh, criticism or a ton of mockery, as it were. And then I also got some loving uh, loving uh, you know correction in the comments. And uh, let, let me tell you, I, I wish I remembered what the word was. It, it's tough. I, I just want to ask for your grace. It's tough. I probably speak thousands of words a week. And uh, look, I don't have the most extensive vocabulary, but I'm always working on my vocabulary. I'm always trying to elevate the language that I use. And sometimes I play with the language, but I do my best to be grammatically correct. Uh, and I, I really do my best. And then sometimes I guess I use a word that's not even a word. And apparently that's what I did on Friday. And it, it bothers me that I can't remember what the word is. But irregardless, irregardless of all of that, I just want to say that I'm sorry. I sincerely apologize. And I will do my best not to use words incorrectly. Uh, and uh, you know, again, irregardless of everything that I've said, my goal is to uh, inform, 
to entertain, to bring a smile to your face, and never confusion. So, uh, irregardless what the word was, uh, I, I apologize from the bottom of my heart. I'm sorry. There we go. All right. Well, that's the show. <laughs> Did you like it? I liked it. Do me a favor. Do me a solid, as it were. Is solid, can I even use that word? Is that too colloquial? 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 I can't even say that word. I tried to use a big word. I got in trouble. Is it too, is it too slangish? I don't think slangish is a word. Do me a solid. Hit the like button. And unfortunately, if you do not hit the like button, uh, somebody in your life will critique every word that you say and laugh in your face if you say the wrong word. Uh, it could happen. It could happen. But you could avoid that by hitting the like button. This is Tony for La Lido Loca. And uh, irregardless of how this show went for you, uh, I'll see you on the Lido. We'll do this show again tomorrow. Did you see that I was stuck in a 99 square, 80 inches wide? Make sure you watch the review of my tea tiny cabin. Irregardless, I'm going to Alaska in seven days. Tony for La Lido Look. Until the next time, we'll see you on the Lido.